Daryl said the same thing about the transitions, and so did Daniel. Yeah. Uh, I think it needs like a little more front grip. Make yeah, it like snap it a little is. easier. Yeah, but it's like on the straightaways, it has hella good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. But it's getting somewhere. It's, it's yeah, good. Sure, bro. It's getting good. Hell yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Red Cat RDS build series. In this episode, our Rev Cat RDSX gets an Acuvance heart transplant by way of a Jarvis XX ESC and a fledged 10.5 motor with internal fan. We'll solder it all in and give you some helpful tips to keep your wiring more organized and tidy while giving it that higher caliber look. Then, we'll explore tuning the ESC with our Tau 3 programmer in the AI setting and let our locals help us take it to the perfect level. We wrap up episode 6 with some fine tuning for grip and exploring the final drive ratio range of our chassis while we install a massive new spur gear. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. Do you want the absolute best power plant there is for your drift car? There it is. With features like reverse polarity protection, advanced torque settings for acceleration and deceleration, dual fan ports, and a price that's competitive with its Yokomo and Hobbywing counterparts. There was no questions asked when it came to what was going to power our latest project. When it came to the motor, truthfully, the only reason why a fledge was chosen over an agile was so we could keep the car with all those nice red anodized accents. Acuvance is also the only electronics manufacturer that produces drift only electronics. There's no bashers, crawlers, drones, dragsters, boats, or off-road racers in their arsenal. That keeps their lineup of products simple and makes your life easy. One thing I want to note 
as someone that may be new to AccuVan's products is that things like their fans are a la carte. The ESC does not come factory with a fan installed. AccuVance is also a full circle shop producing things such as capacitors, stabilizers and balancers, programmers, cards and SBUS links as well as their own adapters and update tools for their products. You can really do it all with their products. Once we've mechanically installed our new fledge motor and XX ESC, it's time to plumb the wiring in. If this is your first time upgrading electronics like this, make sure to make a list. Your ESC will need these connections made to operate. Your ABC motor terminals on the motor will need their 3.5mm bullets attached. Sensor wire must be plugged in. You'll need a receiver wire from your ESC to receiver. S bus to link port if you'd like to make adjustments to your ESC with a tau programmer or s bus link any updated or upgraded capacitors and lastly the positive and negative battery leads will need your ends of choice be it deans bullets or xt plugs now i don't want to bore you with my extremely overthought processes of wiring however i will let you in on some of the things i'm doing here as we fast forward through i'm gonna train my wires for a while um, if you have the option to do this you're not under the gun or rushing i like doing this because it makes getting these wires attached to whatever object be it the bullet connector the motor etc uh, a little bit easier. I also like doing this because it helps me map out exactly how I want to do the layout and that visualization really cleans everything up and helps really make the right move. So if you have the time and can do that I highly suggest it. Uh, some of the other things that will make your life easier is picking up something like this soldering jig here which makes all of your various setup soldering tasks a breeze. It comes with these little slots that hold your bullet connectors, two clamp arms for wire holding, a pocket for Deans and other various size XT connections, and it's carbon fiber to boot. My favorite part is how small yet helpful it is, which makes transporting it and keeping it with my essential track tools a piece of cake. If you gotta have one, Make sure to grab one with the link below. For me, this will be my fourth fledge motor and I've learned that out of the box, they are spicy. So our last step today is going to be to again address our gearing. I love playing with the final drive ratio because in most cases it's very affordable and it's a modification that requires only simple tools while it's very quick and the type of change that you will feel immediately. It will make profound differences to the controllability of your car and the feeling of grip. For the past few months we've had this 90 tooth spur on the car, but today we're going to swap to a 96 tooth spur from Usakani, the same as the factory spur that comes on the NGE. Now the inner shaft diameter on the RDS is a little different than the factory size that came on the Usakani. So you see me here just slightly opening the hole up with a body reamer, going slowly taking little bits at a time off until it just snugly fits and allows me to tighten up the spur with no binding and no weird flexing. I figured out which size to use by revisiting the RDS instruction manual. I scrolled way down to page 59 of 60 and on that page you'll find pre-calculated gear ratio tables courtesy of our friends at Red Cat Racing. Now here I wanted to make a comparison. My Usakani NGE had a 4 gear transmission a 96 tooth spur and an 18 pinion and I was running a fledge 10.5. The NGE transmission has a top shaft gear of 18 teeth, a differential of 52 teeth. Now remember when you're calculating your gear ratio only the first and last gear tooth count are essential 
to determine your transmission ratio as the idler gears have no impact on the ratio. Science, yo! Now I made this chart to simplify this process in case you don't have a gearing chart handy. Your final drive ratio is equal to your gear ratio times your transmission ratio. To get your gear ratio, you need to take the number of teeth on your spur and divide it by the number of teeth on your pinion. In our case, 96 teeth divided by 18 teeth yields 5.33 for our gear ratio. To calculate your transmission ratio, divide the number of teeth on your differential by the number of teeth on your top shaft gear. In our case, 52 teeth divided by 18 yields a 2.60 transmission ratio on our Red Cat RDS. Taking now our 5.33 gear ratio and multiplying that by our 2.60 transmission ratio, that yields a 13.87 final drive ratio for our Red Cat RDS. So we've now moved from an 8.8 .8 stock ratio to a 13.87. That increased feeling of torque should tame the overall power of the fledge nicely and it should help us take a lot of load off of the motor to push the car forward which will result in lower overall temperatures for running the car for prolonged periods of time. Exactly what we wanted to fix. Plugged into the Tau 3, made sure our firmware was updated, and we're going to jump into the AI protocol instead of our standard tuning options. It was really interesting to try AI tuning, being able to increase either your acceleration, um, your traction, or your braking force. Um, you could up or down in scale. Uh, by points and the programmer is going to do the settings for you instead of you manually having to go through. And to be completely honest, as a long time tuner of ESCs, it was really easy. And not only was it easy, it actually did feel pretty good. I would be curious to see if we could get it feeling smoother ourselves, but the fact that we could plug this in and within 10 minutes of track time, we were already having fun. Within just a couple laps, you could tell Jaime was feeling it in that lead, and Daniel was getting more and more comfortable chasing him. I loved watching him in this zone. Check this one out. Yeah, <laughs> you could have held something up in between them. Now what might take some of you by surprise is every one of these clips was from the week before we switched to our new Acuvan setup. That's right, we were shredding this car this hard in the train with the stock Red Cat brushless but uncensored motor and the Hobby Wing Cheapo ESC. I'm telling you guys, that setup worked really well on this RTR and it was literally the last thing that we upgraded from our ready to run to take it to the next level. So I want to give a big shout out to our locals, Jaime here showcasing his skills, albeit on one clip that he happened to <laughs> bump the wall a little bit, man, it's all good. Um, but right there, did you see how the car kind of stalled out? After 15 to 20 minutes, the motor would become so heat soaked that your brakes felt really mushy and the car was slow to react when you would come back into the throttle. So now let's look at some of the Acuvance laps.
At this point, we've increased the acceleration factor by six points in our AI and the car feels incredible. Suddenly, our CLSD is alive and eating well. All of that mechanical grip that we spent the first few episodes dialing in with our Rev D lower arms, as well as our toe block placement, is giving this car the grip of an FD legend, an angle to lock up doors against even the steeziest chassis. Nobody could deny that this little red cat creation is capable of hanging with the best of them at the hands of really all of the local drivers that picked it up. This creation has earned itself a new body too, so make sure and stay tuned to episode 7 of the RDS Build Series. We'll catch you next time.